In October of 2020, I had a look at this. This is the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex, the original one. Uh, I did a full overview and since then I was lucky enough to be able to keep it as well. It's pretty much been my personal laptop of choice for the last few months. I love the portability of it, I love the screen, the design in general. For me, it was one of those laptops that achieved that blend of being a laptop that I genuinely want to take around with me while still having enough power to do the stuff I need to do. So primarily productivity stuff, uh, then you've got some creative apps as well with the more insanely demanding stuff that I do like editing this footage reserved for my PC at home. I'm a fan of it is what I'm saying. So you can imagine I was quite pleased when I was told that I would be receiving the sequel to this device. Uh, now I'll stand by the fact that when I was told that news, I replied in a calm manner, whereas in my head I was more like, That's brilliant, thanks, bye. Get in! Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's bring it out, shall we? This is the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex 2 5G. Disclaimers, as per the usual, uh, this is an overview, not a review. So we're gonna try and give you everything we think you would need to know about this device while trying to steer clear of too much personal opinion, which not gonna lie, I maybe achieved that about 65% of the time at best. It depends how excited I get about it, to be honest. But in any case, uh, this one is gonna be a little bit different as we're not just gonna show you exactly what you need to know about this device, but also how it compares to last year's model. Now, the Galaxy Book Flex 2 5G is one, a mouthful to say, and two, uh, has a number of changes and improvements to the overall experience. Now, the biggest difference is the support for 5G, of course. Uh, having that option on an all singing, all dancing laptop is a big deal, and we will get to that. But first, let's look at the rest. The outside, the body, remains absolutely gorgeous, solid and super thin, uh, crafted from aluminium with these diamond cut lines. It really is a lovely thing to look at. Uh, the small differences are things like the logo, which is now much more discreet compared to last year's. Uh, the device itself is also the tiniest amount thicker. Uh, you can kind of notice it with the vent at the back here, which has got that slight bit of extra room. Um, but again, it really is the, the tiniest difference. You're only gonna notice it in a video like this where we have them both side by side and you're looking at it at the exact angle. So it really doesn't matter. The bottom vent remains exactly the same, though the speaker grills have moved from where they were on the side to now being bottom firing on the device. Then we have the pores, which is a much more improved situation on last year. Uh, first, we have the USB-C port and a Thunderbolt 4 port as well. Uh, there is the headphone jack and a port for UFS or microSD storage. And on the other side, we have, hold your breath, a full-size HDMI port and full-size USB 3.0 port. Those two and the improved Thunderbolt 4 as well are new additions and are much appreciated as it gives you that balance of legacy compatibility uh, whilst also being completely future-proof as well. Uh, now, of course, that's not forgetting the SIM card tray, which we also have here, uh, and the S Pen placement, which has moved round to the front, both of which we'll talk about a little bit later. The only other thing left to mention with the outside is the choice of colour. Now, the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex 2 5G comes in royal silver, and that's that. It's Royal Silver. No blue option this year, which is absolutely fine. The Royal Silver, uh, a lot like the logo, is a much more discreet choice of color while still being absolutely gorgeous. Not gonna lie, I do miss the blue finish, but it is what it is. Maybe we'll see it again one day, who knows. But now it's time for the inevitable music break in this video. Cue the shot of the screen. The Galaxy Book Flex 2 5G features a 13.3 inch full HD QLED display with a touchscreen panel. It's as gorgeous as it was last time and remains one of the best Windows 10 laptops you can get for vibrant images. Uh, it's VDE certified for 100% color volume and we still have one of my favorite features on this device, uh, the Max 600 nit outdoor mode, which you can activate via a shortcut on the keyboard. It's brilliant for if you're outside on a sunny day, lovely stuff. The hinge is slightly improved from what I can tell anyway. It just feels like it has a little bit more resistance. So if you're one of those people that moves their laptop from room to room while still open, which I do a surprising amount since kind of looking at this laptop, uh, it's just a lot better at kind of holding 
its position. The screen itself will still have a little bit of wobble, uh, which you're never to be gonna get when the screen's this thin, unless you get an iron rod down the back of it. Um, but yeah, hinge feels great. We're gonna be moving to the keyboard now, but before we get there, we need to address something which is probably one of the most noticeable additions to the Flex 2, and that is this camera. It is a camera that is built into the keyboard itself. Now, you might be asking, why, Adam, would I want to video call the ceiling? Which is a ridiculous question, but it remains the case. Um, for video calls and stuff, we still have our standard 720p HD camera on the front of the display. This will be for your video calls, and along with the dual array microphones that are built in, it sounds and it looks like this. So if you're on Teams or Skype or just a general video call like that, you're sorted. So if that is the camera that you use for video calls, then what is the point of the camera in the base? Now, of course, one of the major parts of this is that this device is a two-in-one, so we can flip this round, we've got our viewfinder of the actual screen, and then our camera, our 13 megapixel camera, is right there on the keyboard deck. Now, quality-wise, uh, it's actually pretty good. Now, it's not something that I'm gonna say is better than your Samsung uh, Galaxy S21 Ultra or anything like that. It's not a camera I would use for stunning photography, but I don't think that's the point. For me, this camera is a brilliant use case for businesses, specifically people like surveyors or anyone that needs to grab a quick photo of a building space, some drawings, receipts for anyone that's ever declared receipts before. The kind of stuff that doesn't need to have the highest megapixel count or a portrait mode. The advantage here is that you can grab these quick photos and then it's immediately on your device. Now, I know there's gonna be the argument for cloud syncing photos uh, from a phone, which of course you can easily do. It's literally, there is literally a Your Phone app that I talk about frequently uh, where you can do that, but there is never gonna be a replacement for instant access, which is provided by this camera placement. Is it different? Yeah. Can it be useful? Absolutely. With that out of the way, we have the keyboard itself. We have the same style layout as the original Flex, though the keys feel slightly more tactile and have more of a clickiness to them, I guess. Uh, the key travel remains excellent, and we have uh, backlighting, and we have a large blue fingerprint sensor, which to this point has never failed me, uh, which of course works with Windows Hello, allows for passwordless login, and you can also use it to verify purchases online if you store your card details on the Edge browser itself, which is sweet. The row of function keys up the top are all the same except one. We now have a new function key which allows you to block any recordings of the screen on the device. Uh, this has replaced the button for wireless power share, uh, which is no longer included. Now, the way this worked on the previous version was that you would take your phone and you would place it on the trackpad itself to wirelessly charge. The problem, and you can see where I'm going here, is that once the phone's on your trackpad, you can't use the trackpad. So. I don't know, it's been taken away. Maybe it's just a feature that people didn't use for that reason, we will never know. In any case, you can still charge up your devices by plugging them in to the laptop itself. There is a setting in Samsung settings uh, where you can turn this on, so you're all good there. Whilst we mentioned the trackpad as well, it's worth noting that this is a slightly different shape to last year's as well. It's more of a 16 by nine rather than the ultra wide from before. Speakers, by the way, they are still AKG and they sound like this. <laughs> And that is sort of that, I guess. That's nearly all the comparisons I can make between the new model and its older sibling. Of course, though, there is the question of power, which this year is a much more interesting story. Now, the Galaxy Book Flex 2 5G uh, has two options for processing power, either an 11th gen Core i5 or an 11th gen uh, i7, both Intel, of course. Uh, but you may have already noticed that we have a new badge here as well from all the product shots that we've been doing, Intel Evo. Now, this is not a replacement for the Core series and it's not a new name for i5 or i7 either. Uh, this is Intel's certification. So this is a topic that we'll touch on uh, as we go through future overviews. But to cut a long story short, a laptop only gets an Intel Evo badge if it hits a set amount of criteria. So it's not just about the processing power. It's also got to meet minimum requirements for uh, the RAM, for uh, how, the type of storage, for how long the battery lasts, for how light it is, what's the screen quality like? Does it have Wi-Fi 6? All this sort of stuff. It's basically a criteria for what makes a modern Windows 10 premium device. Uh, it's a helpful little indicator more than anything that when you're looking at these devices, before you even look at the spec sheet, if it's got an Intel Evo badge on it, you know it can go. We'll talk about Intel Evo more um, in future overview videos, but for now, here is the spec sheet. 
The device we have features an 11th gen Intel Core i7, also available as an i5, 8GB of RAM, 512GB of NVMe SSD storage, with an i5 version getting the 256GB option, uh, Intel Iris Xe graphics with the latest Bluetooth and Wi-Fi standards. Uh, Samsung also has a claim for all-day battery life, which from where I've been using it, I'd say holds up. I don't have an exact number for you, but in any case, I've had this thing charged up in the morning, and then I've gone through the rest of the day with fairly frequent use and not had to take it back to the plug, so you're all good there. As for performance though, from my time using it, productivity apps absolutely fly. Uh, with things like Word and PowerPoint opening up extremely quickly, uh, you're not going to be struggling here for multitasking. Uh, plus with the Intel Iris Xe graphics, uh, it's great for some creative apps as well. So we were able to try out Adobe Photoshop uh, and Premiere Rush, both of which uh, you can try out uh, with a free month license that you get as part of Microsoft 365 partner benefits. Check that out if you're a subscriber. There's the plug. But this ran great for creating things like the thumbnails that we do for these videos. And if you're piecing together footage that you're just taking on your phone and stuff like that, really, really good. Obviously for really professional demanding stuff, you're gonna be using uh, a more dedicated system. Uh, but remember, you do have that Thunderbolt 4 port there as well. So you could always plug an external graphics card into it if you're feeling so fancy. Gaming wise, this isn't something that we would normally look at with a device like this, but we mentioned it with the previous model, so it's worth mentioning again. For things like Minecraft Dungeons and The Sims, this is more than capable, which is great if you've got Game Pass for PC, as there is a number of titles on there that will run. Of course, your heavy duty AAA graphical masterpieces uh, will be reserved for your high-end gaming machines, uh, so don't be looking here. Uh, but it's certainly still capable of running certain games very well. If we go back to the creative stuff just for a moment, we need to mention, of course, the S Pen. Its biggest difference is that its placement is now around the front rather than at the side. Uh, and you still have the built-in air command pop-up, which gives you uh, quick access to things like the Pen Up app, uh, live messages, and more. Uh, as before, it's a really solid drawing experience. We tried the Pen Up application that's pre-installed. I know there's some palm blocking here, and I'll tell you what, it's particularly useful if you've got kids and you want to distract them at all with something to color in, though, frankly, it's more likely me coloring things in. I'm a child, all right? The laptop itself comes with its usual array of Samsung pre-installs, like its own settings options for battery health, cleanup software, and more than that. All actually quite useful stuff as well. Now we've covered a lot already in this video and it's almost easy to forget that we haven't really mentioned the one defining factor of this laptop, 5G. SIM cards in laptops is not a new thing. We've seen manufacturers dabbling in it for a while now, but many of them, including Samsung, normally go down the Qualcomm route, uh, which is using an ARM processor to get you 4G or 5G on your laptop, which works great. But ARM processors with Windows 10 right now is still something that's very much in development. Using core processors for a laptop is still the standard bearer when it comes to performance and compatibility, more importantly. So what's exciting here is that we have an all singing, all dancing laptop, which is now truly portable with the addition of that SIM card slot. Now, I don't live in a 5G area, and at the time of this video recording, uh, we were in the midst of a national lockdown here in the UK, so I can't exactly go visit one either. However, I was able to test out the 4G connection, uh, which when you switch to it, Windows 10 by default will limit the amount of data it swallows with things like OneDrive syncing being paused. Though, if you are, of course, on an unlimited data plan, you can switch that option off, and frankly, there isn't that much else to say about it. Using a SIM card works. The story here isn't a performance one, it's about possibilities. A laptop is only as portable as your network connection, and if you do a lot of stuff online, especially if you're using OneDrive to store your files and stuff like that, as soon as you lose that Wi-Fi connection, you're stuck until you can hotspot to another. The addition of 5G eliminates that problem. So to summarize, this laptop is an improvement on an already excellent device from last year. We've got more ports, improved build, additional features, and it's now truly portable. Like, honestly, if you need a laptop for on the go, get yourself a data plan, and this is a really great option. It pairs up really, really well with your Galaxy uh, smartphone, which, by the way, is something we didn't even mention in this video, the fact that you can now open multiple Android apps from your Galaxy smartphone and have them running on your laptop via the Your Phone app. That's cool as heck. But anyways, the point being, uh, it's a modern Windows 10 premium laptop uh, with the bells and whistles to match. I'm just sad that I have to send this one back. 
Thanks for watching. That was an overview of the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex 2 5G. Uh, you can check out all of our previous overviews on Samsung laptops right now, as well as other Windows 10 Premium overviews as well. Make sure you subscribe for all the latest from us. See you around. Thank you.